Grab yourself some easy to cut basing material like cork board or foam, some cheap paint and a hot glue gun. Cut your foam into some little chunks and then use some PVA glue to attach these to your model. In my case I'm sticking them to the base but there's no reason you can't uh, you know jam them into an outstretched power claw or maybe even on a chain blade. Just get creative. For shallower piles of meat, just apply a small dollop of hot glue and then use a metal skewer to agitate it. Just do small, fast circles and it'll help create a ropey, twisted texture, which is going to make it look a lot more like flesh and organs when it's painted, instead of just a blob. Use these skewers to position the meat tendrils where you want. Try to tell a story with your gore here. Is it still alive, like the monster from the thing? Or are these the remains of some unfortunate who got in the way of your army? As always, just have fun with it. I'm going to be applying this gore method to just under half of the models in my actual army, but I am going to be applying it to uh, the majority of my HQs. I apply the gore before painting, but if you've already painted your armies, you can still add gore later on. For centerpiece models like this destroyer lord, I try to be even more adventurous with my gore effects. I apply the hot glue, I agitate it, and then I pull out ropey tendrils over his claws and spread around the base a bit more. I'm trying to give the idea that yeah there's flesh everywhere but it's not just gibbed human remains for example like this stuff is clearly corrupted. It's reaching out, it's corrupting the environment, it's tainted by the warp. So tendrils go everywhere, they're reaching out, they're grabbing these little terrain details on the base, and the Destroyer Lord has obviously stuck his claw in here to investigate it. He may be disgusted with this, but he's also having fun. Cool. I followed similar principles with my Overlord here. I'm using the flesh to add some detail to this plain piece of corkboard I stuck to his base. And you can see here that whilst there's a lot of hot glue everywhere, I avoided the model himself. Now that I've given that hot glue enough time to cool down and properly set, I then primed everything. Just regular old grey primer, and you're done. Ideally, you'd like to paint the gore second to last in your model, with only the last step being any glowing or object source lighting effects that you're adding. The paint I paint the gore with is a bruised, abused reddish purple to all of the meat areas. You can of course use your own purpley red colour if you want, but I mix my own just by adding some blue to red, with a little bit of acrylic medium added to help the flow. Cheap and easy. I should also mention that the acrylic medium also gives a little bit of a gloss finish to the paint. Apply this red-ish colour to all of those hot glue zones, as well as any exposed pieces of foam that you want to be chunked up pieces of meat. Don't worry about painting different materials the same colour, as this difference in texture ultimately will help the effect. You can see that I'm just using a cheap brush here, and I'm applying it generously to all of the models. Don't worry if you make some mistakes, as the following step will help hide them, and I've batch painted this entire army with their score effect. It's an extremely quick process. Hypothetically, you could call things done after you've applied this meat bruise paint, 
as it does look like slightly dry meat when it's dried itself. This would be ideal for Night Lords or Drakari, Flayed Ones, you know, all those guys who with a penchant for taking grim trophies. If you're like me and you've sculpted some tendrils of gore and also like me, you've absentmindedly picked up the model and damaged them, or worse, dropped it, don't worry. Hot glue is flexible, it is quite forgiving, but if you do damage it, it's quick and easy to fix. Just get out your PVA glue and apply a generous blob to the affected or vulnerable area. PVA will dry clear, holds well, and allows for some flexibility. It also accepts acrylic paint easily, so you'll be able to heal the wounds in these wounds and move on. All right, time for blood. Fresh and terrible and homemade. I've got a really easy recipe if you want to make as much blood as you want and there should be a link on the screen as well as in the description. So you can just apply this blood all over the bruised purple gore zones. As always, blood will hide your mistakes, including painted ones. So have a lot of fun with this step. Be generous with blood. When it's dried, the blood recipe, if you follow the link, has a really gloss finish. So it's going to look fresh, straight from the source. It's going to look wet, sore and awful. Perfect. I applied this blood over all of that purple zones for the entire army. It looks terrifying. I cannot emphasize enough how fun it was to just add blood everywhere. I even applied an extra amount over those PVA glue zones on the model I repaired. Looks great. And lo, you have brought horrible sights and probably horrible smells to the battlefield. You can see that I didn't apply gore to every model in the army, but there's no reason that you couldn't if you wanted to. Maybe you've got a Yanari force of Corsairs who have set foot on a Crone world. Why not substitute those reds with greens and make a slimy garden for Nurgle? Or perhaps the bowels of a Tyranid bioship for your intrepid Death Watch force. Get wild. If you'd like to make your own sandstone necrons, be sure to check out the channel Midwinter Minis. Guy there has made a fantastic tutorial and is a must watch. And there should be a link here and in the description. Oh, and the nightmarish necron flesh portal in the background? Yeah, I made that from scratch. It's really easy to make your own, and there should be another link here if you'd like to make one for yourself. Thanks for checking this out. Next up, there should be a, another tutorial video on how to make the lightning effects that you can see my Plasmancer there has, as well as the previous generation Necron Warriors. I swapped out those little green tubes for some homemade lightning effects. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that tutorial. And if you're watching this in the future, and that video is already out, hopefully I've added a link here. If you like this content, yeah, please subscribe, do the bell thing, blah, 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 blah. Really drop me a comment if you've got any questions or suggestions. I try to answer everybody I can. I'm also mildly active on Twitter, at Trap Turtle. And I've got an Instagram, which I am constantly browsing and posting hobby content on, and dog photos, which is at PVA Boy. You can hit me up there as well, you know, whenever. It's 2021, everyone. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Go make a nightmare fit for your tabletop. And yeah, thanks for watching. It really means a lot. Oh yeah, that's my Instagram. Ugh.